Welcome to Funky WK2. Uh, I'm Adrian. Today we're going to do an off-road animal predator bumper install. You can see the finished product here. We're going to get you to this point, hopefully. Um, we're also going to divide this one up into chapters. So if you want to get to a certain point or uh, go back and find something, hopefully that'll make this one a little easier. Um, if you're one of our subscribers, we really appreciate it. If you are not, please like and subscribe. That'll help us out in the future. And we hope to keep bringing you cool content and uh, some off-roading videos. When your off-road animal bumper arrives, it's going to look like this. It's packaged up really well. It's um, about 200 pounds overall. The box will be strapped to a pallet. And then you know everything else is um, plaster wrapped and secured pretty well. After getting into the box, I decided to leave the bumper wrapped up just that's just me. My clumsy ass will hit it and knock it over. Um, I've got it on a dolly, furniture dolly right now, just so I can wheel it around. Protection to keep it from getting dented or chipped up before I even get it installed is usually my MO. The parts you see on top of it, you've got a, I guess you call it a skid plate. It's kind of a cover piece. It covers the brackets and exposed parts on the bottom of the bumper. And it attaches, you can see the four elongated slots right there on the front. Those attach to the radiator brace where your bash plate starts. Next up, we've got some of the exterior trim pieces, some of the support pieces. The two big pieces you see over here on the left are gonna be the covers for your air compressor and your washer fluid reservoir. Now, if you have the air suspension, these are the ones you get. If you don't have the air suspension, I'm pretty sure the two pieces you get actually cut in a little more to give you a little bit more clearance because they don't have to clear the bulging part of the air compressor where it sticks out. So just keep that in mind. That's why they ask you the difference when you order it, whether you have the air suspension or not. Next pieces down are gonna be um, some of like the, I guess you'd call them the grill pieces. Top one is gonna be the trim piece for the winch and that's gonna have your fair lead on it. Uh, license plate bracket will mount to that, the flipping plate. And then under that, you have the left and right pieces. That'll be where you can reach in to access your winch clutch if you need to. Um, those are just generally open. They are also structural though. You've got holes in the top and bottom. They'll connect the front of the opening where the winch goes. Um, they'll connect that top and bottom to the, all the other pieces that attach. And then last, you have your radiator mounts on the right. And those are gonna be um, basically what the entire bumper structure is gonna amount to. They'll mount to the sides of your radiator and then the bumper will attach to those, but there are some other pieces that also mount in there. So those are the big heavy ones. Those are gonna be the main weight support. Okay, so we've got the fasteners out back here. One, two, 10 millimeter bolt, and then three up here. Those are all gonna be either plastic rivets or like the push rivets that you can pry up. Next step is take the corner of the bumper right here and pull it out and kind of forward. And it's gonna be scary if it's the first time you've done it, but you're not gonna break it. You've got clips right in here and those are all gonna snap into the bumper right here. So start right there, pull as it comes out, move your hand forward, that way you're not stretching pieces. And you'll get to where we are here. Oh, also uh, there's three up here, push rivets, one here, here, and on the other side. When you get the sides loose around to the headlights, come up to the top, and you'll pry this up. Sorry, I'm totally not paying attention to the camera. Hopefully I just got that. Once you pry those up, come over here to the center of the bumper and just lift it off. As far as the install goes, mine's going to be a little different. I had the pre-runner before the previous off-road animal uh, fret bumper, plus I have the hidden winch mount. So what we're going to do is take the winch mount off and then it'll be like we're starting from that step um, where you've got the whole front, including the crash bar and everything removed for the install of the Predator bumper. So you can see we cut off some of the bumper here. 
I cut the line lower than the specifications, mainly because I kind of screwed up my winch mount when I did it before, when I had the hidden winch mount with the um, pre-runner or the off-road animal regular bumper. So I just wanted to make sure I had some room for error because I always make errors. <laughs> anyway, so I used a box cutter. Not the easiest thing, but I found if you score it a couple of times with like medium to light pressure, then when you go back through it with a little bit more pressure, it'll just cut right through. And I know my edges are not even, I wasn't super worried about it for this cut, but they're very smooth. So doing it this way, if you have the patience for it, you're not gonna get any melting plastic. You're not gonna get any like burrs or jagged lines or anything like that. So like I said, this will be smooth when I'm done. I'll go back over it. Um, this is my first trim. You can see what is off. So my first cut is a little under where it's supposed to be, but it still takes this much of the bumper off. Something to take note of when you're doing your tow hooks, and this applies to any off-road animal install that involves the hooks. So the holes in the hooks are a little bit offset. So are the holes in the spacers. You wanna make sure you get that offset on the same side. Otherwise, when you mount these, you're not getting the full support. See how it's hanging off over here? You're not getting the full support like they're intended. So flip them over. Line them up ish like that, and then they're square. So, for the parking sensors, I ended up labeling mine just so I made sure I got them back in order. When you pry them out of here, it's not too hard to get them out. You just gotta be patient, give them a little bit of finagling. But when you pull them out, there's a rubber o-ring that goes around the face of the sensor make sure you hold on to those I'm pretty sure we're gonna need them so when you pull the sensor out it's gonna look like this notice there's no o-ring on this one and so I've been piling them all right here make sure I keep them all together okay for the sensors I was overthinking it basically took some JB Weld silicone sealant adhesive RTV and put it on the outside edges. And then there were a couple of places I had to cut whenever I got the sensors off so they weren't being bent up, like pried away from the surface. So far, this seems to be working. They're not totally dry yet, so we'll see. Worst case, I'll. Uh, redo them and scrape the whatever RTVs left off of them try it again all right full-on success on the sensor front so one of the issues we encounter with the sensors is on the stock bumper and I will put a picture in the video here so you guys can compare it um, in the stock bumper while the sensor brackets are at different angles you know some of them would be like this or whatever they're not flat the sensors were almost basically parallel to the ground in each case. So the bracket would be at an angle or whatever, but the way the sensor would snap in was almost parallel. So I wanted to keep that as much as possible. This one right here is going like this, just to the corner, it just barely fits. Doing the same thing with this one. I actually ended up angling this one up a little bit. This one angles down just a hair like this. This last one actually angles down this way. So basically, like, there's a corner right here. It's a triangle inside of the brace. The tail of this one comes this way. Same thing over here. Got a triangle inside like this. And so the tail of this one goes that way. Um, and basically, that was because when you get in here and start fidgeting with the cable for it, when I had them rotated the other way, this wasn't quite long enough to reach over here and connect, so that caused a problem. You can see in here, got the wires for the sensors. 
Right now, I've got them run. I did not feed any of these wires through the framework other than right here and on the other side over here. There's some holes that you pass it through. That way, it's higher up than the actual brace that this attaches to. And that way, if you take the bumper off and the sensors are already disconnected, you're not running it through like this separate brace that stays on the vehicle. So you could actually remove the sensors with the bumper like you could from the factory. So some of the steps for the install I won't be able to do since I already had the hidden winch mount and everything in here. Um, so pretend there is a crash bar right here. There isn't, but just pretend. Anyway, these two 13 millimeter bolts right here on both sides come out. And then this is the bracket. It's actually bent right now, but uh, which way does it go? It goes this way. This is the bracket that used to be right here. It's just a 90 degree bend and one end of the crash bar actually screwed into that too. And you can just wiggle these off until they break. That's what I did. Um, it's like that on both sides. Both of those have to come off. Both of the 13s that are in the radiator brace also have to come off. So all in all, you should have four 13 millimeter bolts that come out. The two that are here are shorter. These two are pretty long, kind of a pain in the ass to get out, but they have to come out for the mounts. Okay, so the air compressor mount, you can see I already have it installed, but basically when you take the crash bar off, these two um, studs right here are attached to the end of it. So remove the bolts in here. Let's see if I can get that angle. And then mount the bracket for the air compressor. And then once that's mounted, put these original nuts back on. Um, it took a little bit of finagling with mine. I if I remember right, I think I had to bend this L bracket just a little bit. Um, and it's just because of the differences in the builds. Some, you know, when you screw something in, if it's not a perfect size slot that the bracket's going to attach to, you got a little bit of up and down adjustment or whatever. So um, it should go on pretty easily, though. You shouldn't really have to mess with it too much. Okay, next step. We're going to put the... Uh, rear supports on to go to the where the OEM crash bar attached up here. I usually take them to tight and then back them up a hair. They've got some room up and down depending on how you end up mounting everything. So sorry, I'm shady camera work here. They've got some room up and down. So you want to be able to use that depending on how everything else is going to mount down here. So I usually leave them. Got these fitted. We've got the sensors drying in the bumper, the new Predator bumper, not the old bumper. So we're going to refit the rest of this one back on here. too hard once you get the process down always start with the top first once you get that situated then everything else will line up um, obviously don't push here there's nothing back there so come over here start right here next to the light Just give everything a good push when you get over here I've still got my fender flares and everything I haven't trimmed anything else yet Next step is just to pop the cage nuts in. It's pretty easy. Stick that through on that side. I usually use a screwdriver just so I don't snag a finger because it hurts. So now that one's in, it can slide a little bit. Do that, I believe there's 10 of them. So do that nine more times. All right. This is the back side of the bumper where the center light bar is gonna go. The opening is right at two and five eighths. 
So be sure you plan accordingly with your light bar. The one I got, I didn't realize the opening was that narrow. Um, so the one I got is taller than that and is not gonna fit. We've got the passenger side bracket on. Broke out the old trusty torque wrench. Everything's torqued down. The 30 Newton meters is about 22-ish torque foot-pounds. So that's where we're at. So now you will come over to the other side and put this one on over here. Okay, we've got the mounts on both sides. I untorqued them because I had them in the wrong spot. They are a little tight, so they don't move too much, but they are still where I can adjust them after we get this bumper put on, which is what we're about to do now. So wish us luck. Not sure what I'm saying here. Probably something like, we tried it, didn't work, we're gonna cut some more out. Long story short, just cut more out in the beginning because it's not gonna fit behind the bumper anyway. It's gonna hang down too far, so just cut it off. The brackets that go underneath, these also help support the Predator. I have these loose right now since we are just test fitting. I uh, wanna make sure there's room to wiggle everything around. But your bolts come up through this on the bottom. If you mounted the bull bar, before or the other bumper, the regular pre-runner, it's gonna be different because everything on that one mounts to the top. So just something to wanted to point out. This mounts up through the bottom and then you screw these bolts down under here. And so the serrated nut sits on the top. Another thing you'll notice is that the hooks actually go the opposite way. For all of the other off-road animal parts, the bull bar, the pre-runner bumper, the hooks actually point in on the Predator install though, they're gonna come out. And that's just the way it's designed, it's a little wider. Be sure you follow the torque specs. I was being stupid one day, a couple months ago, when I had the regular bumper on here, and I was using a really long breaker bar and I felt like the bolts were loose. And so one of these two inside ones right here was actually on the driver's side. I torqued it down too much and I broke the head clean off of it. These are only supposed to be at 30 Newton meters according to the instructions, which is 22, 23 foot pounds. Um, so use a torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, don't hulk them down. You're gonna be able to keep turning them if you're putting some force behind it and you're just gonna go too far and you're gonna snap one off. Other thing to note is in the instructions, it says to put the brackets on just a hair wider than the inside frame for the Predator bumper. It says leave two to five millimeters. I ended up having to loosen them and then readjust them just a little bit. I did use a level on the vertical, I put it up against this and used it right here just to make sure it was pretty close, or at least as close as I could get it to um, straight up and down. And that'll help you in the mounting of it later if you have a level and can do that. One more thing I wanna mention, the inside bolts, they are actually offset, and this is not the bracket, but the actual bolt holes on the frame, the radiator frame or whatever you wanna call it. The holes are actually offset the same on both sides, so normally, like it would be opposite on the other side, so your clearance is gonna be different. On these, your top one is set more to the right and your bottom one is set more to the left. When you come over to this side, they're exactly the same way. So when you get into this bracket, this is gonna be a tighter clearance right here. You don't necessarily want to try to use the bolts to center the brackets. In the instructions, it says to use a lift table or a friend. Originally, I was gonna use my transmission jack. Um, we actually had another neighbor come over and so there were three of us total and it makes it easier. Two people can lift on the sides and get the angles towards the back set while somebody else comes in here and hand tightens the bolts enough to get a set on there so you can situate it how you want it. Um, we came back at my wife's suggestion, I have to add or she'll shoot me in the face, that we put the jack on this side, on the passenger side. We were having some issues getting it lined up exactly how we wanted it, and this really helped. The interior three bolts right here, we've got them tight now, and we've got it where we want it on the sides. Um, there's very, very little of the cut showing, which is what I want. I want it to look like it just goes down into the bumper. I don't want a gap or anything there. So our next step is going to be these bottom brackets. Um, I say that. The first thing we'll do is go back and tighten these down to the torque spec, and then we'll come back and do this bottom one. And once it's tight, we'll double check the hook mounts and tighten those up too. All right, we just got the sensors in. We actually had to redo them. I think I swapped sides, mixed some stuff up. Um, whatever it was, my wife helped me fix it, just like normal Tuesday. The uh, 
we're gonna wait and see when they dry and see if everything works once we hook it up. So I won't have any more details on whether they work right or not just yet, but hopefully um, by the time you guys see this video, we'll have it sorted out and you'll know. I don't know if I've touched on it in my other videos, but when we got the Smitty built, one of the reasons I got this was because I could remote mount the control box and then the clutch, um, the housing could be clocked. So with the off-road animal pre-runner, it would mount with the clutch down, so it would clock this 180 degrees, and then you'd reach up underneath to do it. Since I don't have to do that with this one, I'm moving everything back up top. So clutch is back 180 degrees, back to its original spot, putting the box back on top. I had it mounted under the winch tray before just to keep it out of the way, and so that it wasn't interfering with the bumper and everything up there. So everything is back to basically how it came. Um, you can also clock the motor housing if you need to. Um, previously, this was aiming down. That was just for puddles and stuff like that. But now, I think it's actually going to be more protected with this in the back towards the radiator. So we're going to try that out and see how that works. Got the Smitty built winch in. Uh, moved this over from previous setup. Everything is secured. Um, torqued down. By, that's what I mean by secured. Power's wired up. Got the controller. Um, the wired controller plugged back in. It's still routed the same place. It goes to my brake master cylinder, that little compartment where it stays dry, stays out of the dust and dirt and mud and stuff. So now let me show you a few things underneath. Behind this lip, you can see I've got some cables hanging down. I'm gonna have to double check those in a minute and make sure that those aren't gonna rub. So if your uh, cables come down from the back of your control box on top of your winch, then you're going to double check and make sure they're not going to rub on the radiator or the um, the condenser for the AC system. On the winch, since I had some cables back by the radiator that were touching, I decided to clock the motor housing. This is the one that Smitty Belt sent me a replacement for under warranty. Um, so I had it all apart anyway, I had to take it out. But I clocked this so that the cables are all down, the terminals are all down. And that way it lengthens the cables out a little bit more so they're not bunched up and rubbing on the radiator. You can see up in there, there's a little more clearance. Makes me feel better about anything from rubbing and chafing and cutting through wires or anything. We've got the center mesh panel installed. This is gonna be home to a lot of things. You've got your fair lead, number plate bracket, and then your sensor for the adaptive cruise control. Start with the fair lead. We attach this, basically if you haven't done this before, on the back side of this, on the actual mesh panel, there's a bigger square metal cutout. And then this, you kind of center it on it, and that way when the, the either cable or rope is coming through, it's rubbing on your fair lead and not on the cutout in the back. So, got this all installed and secure. The number plate flip bracket, AKA license plate bracket in the US. Right here, it actually has a cotter pin and there's some holes on the sides. You pull this out and then you can raise it up and you can actually stick it back in up here to hold it if you need to. I've got mine kind of tight right now so it holds itself just fine. There are plastic washers in here that'll help keep metal on metal contact at a minimum. That way you're also not rubbing the powder coat off of this and making it prone to rust or corrosion. One other thing is make sure you install it like this. If you install it with this little lip up, this plate up here, the piece that holds your license plate and raises up, won't actually go open this far. It'll run into this and stop it about right here. And then you're more likely to have interference with your actual winch line also. Next is the adaptive cruise control bracket. The correct one for this is in the instructions it shows it. It's kind of like a four prongs, looks kind of like a spider, four-legged spider. It shows you a picture of the ACC sensor without the uh, lens on the front. It shows the inside electronics. Don't pay attention to this bracket that it's mounted to. Um, they probably should have blacked that out just so it doesn't confuse anybody. But this is actually from the pre-runner. It's just showing you what it's going to look like when you open it up so that you can swap out the screws and remount it on the correct plate. So the actual plate that it comes with, like I said, it looks like a spider, uh, mounts behind this panel. 
And they actually did a really good job as far as the holes for it. There's not a lot of play as you tighten them up. Like it's pretty much going to sit like it sits. Like you, there's not much room for adjustment. Then your next stop is going to be mounting this whole center mesh panel up here. The directions call for two nuts up here, but these are actually welded in. I don't know if that was a change they made. Um, either way, it's actually, actually like having them welded in. It makes it a whole lot easier. So I screwed these in loosely. You're going to use the 16, or I'm sorry, the M M8 by 16 Allen head black oxide bolts for these top two. These bottom two are going to be the hex head bolts. They're M8. Now you're going to want to put the bolt down like we did here. Otherwise, you're going to run an issue of this hitting your uh, winch rope. And if you're on cable, it's not such a big deal. But obviously, you don't want sharp edges from a bolt snagging your synthetic winch rope. Once you get those tightened down finger tight, then you have room to adjust this panel forward and back. I've got mine pretty well, I think it's pretty well adjusted where it needs to be. Um, like they say in the instructions, just make sure it's pretty much facing forward. Once you get it where you want it, start tightening these top bolts. We did a little bit at a time because obviously as you tighten it, it's going to pull one way or another. So we alternated, tried to keep them pretty even. And we did the top bolts first and I actually had this pulled all the way forward as far as it would come in these slots. And then the bottom, we ended up pushing in just a little bit, but then we tightened those up too. And so now it's all secure. All right. One thing we did not do, and I should have thought about it, but this is the cable for the ACC sensor. Um, you need to find a good way to route it around your winch. You don't want this to get caught up in your rope, but now that I have this mounted, there's more limited space back here. So pro tip, Connect this to the back of the sensor before you get this thing mounted up and that way you've got access to the back of it on the sensor You can tell I adjusted it a little bit. So it's aiming more forward and down just a hair But something I thought about because the winch is right behind this if you run the cable inside that on one side It is all protected and it comes out at the top so that it clears the winch and the winch line and it's not gonna get caught or tangled So we debated a couple of different ways to try to cut this fender. We want it as flush as possible with this line. So we just came up with this. We'll try it and see if it works. Line it up from the back. Kind of feel back here and you can feel with the edge of the tape too. Right about there. And then bring this around. So the front line should be pretty close, but if we actually cut it from the back back here, and cut it straight through, it should be right on the money. All right, so the little tape trick worked. Probably needs just a hair off of the backside, or the bottom end over here. It's right up against it, but I mean, that's a pretty damn snug fit. So I'm pretty happy with that. Wish I had been a little tighter right here on this line, but I mean, realistically, it's pretty good. It's hard to make cuts like that and then get the bumper situated exactly, so. Taking all this time to get it all done has been worth it so far though. This is the stock harness. I just cut it. What we're gonna do is put the DT connector on there. Which most auxiliary lights are going to this connector. It's a um, plug and play, it's really easy, it's universal. So the best way to do two wires together is to solder them. If you don't have a soldering iron, you don't have the, you know, work table, whatever, there are other options. So what I did, I bought these on Amazon. They're solder seal wire connectors. They basically give you the best of both worlds. They give you heat shrink plus solder all in one. So these outside tube is heat shrink, obviously, and then there's solder in the middle right here. So basically you push both ends of the wire into it, make sure the stripped parts are in contact with each other in the middle and overlap. And then you give it a little heat. It's not pretty, but you see that these wires are now soldered together and they're also heat shrinked. So I'll put some electrical tape over this whole thing and that connection's good to go. I already tested it, it's working. We are in business. And here's the tricky part. So I went ahead and put the grill in on this side. I had to put it in without a light because top part of the washer bottle 
you can see how close that is already. That just totally interferes with trying to get it, the little face plate in there with a, um, a light mounted. But on this side, if you have the air suspension, you've got this old behemoth in the way right here. But there's actually enough room up behind there that I was able to slide this one in with a light attached. So your mileage may vary. So if you have smaller lights, it may be easier. Um, just something to consider. If you're test fitting your bumper and you think you're getting close to it being final, I would probably run your wiring and stick these in before you get the final mount. Cause once you got it done, you don't want to undo it. Got the bottom bash plate on. This thing is really pretty, so I'm thinking about taking it off when I off-road. I don't want to mess it up. Just kidding. Kind of. Underneath, it attaches to the regular fasteners. The instructions, it says, do not over-torque these. He is not bullshitting you. I um, now have M6 nut certs in there because I've over-torqued them. And so, I had to drill them out and pop those in there. Hopefully these last for a while. I was easier on them this time. So anyway, lesson learned. Don't over torque them. Uh... We're getting close to the end. One of the last steps is going to be put this panel up here. Get this side done. There's five bolts. These are the... M6 by, I want to say maybe 16. And then you've got the bottom bolt, which is an M8. And the bottom bolt is just going to connect right here. It's the bottom of the bash plate. It's going to connect it to this bolt hole on the bottom of the cover you're about to put on. Easiest way I've found to install this. So you've got five bolts. Start right here and you got two, three, four, and five. Easiest way I've found is to get like number two and then number four in you just need to get them in a couple threads and then the whole thing will hang from that and then you can go back and get them all in and get them snugged up i never torque them down all the way with the impact i always come back and do them by hand that way you don't over tighten them since you're just connected to cage nuts on the back get too much twist on them coming in and you can bend those out of place. Then you do the fender liner. I did. A, I started it right here just so you can see. I'm basically cutting it along the body line right here on the outside. Or about an inch lip up in here. So if I cut this, that'll give us about an inch. that will tuck in and then we'll be good to go. Using a box cutter, I'm just going to bring it up inside and push up slowly.